Hello, my name is John, and in this Unity tutorial, we are going to build a sliding door that responds when the player encounters a collider, causing the door to slide open, play an animation. And when the player leaves the collider, it plays another animation of the door closing. Um, this is not hard to do. It is multi-step, so let's go ahead and get started. To accomplish the sliding door, we will be using a combination of the animation panel, the animator panel, as well as creating scripts that we will place on the door uh, that react to the player. Uh, so let's begin with the player. It's You have to have something that you can tag as player for this to work. In this particular instance, I'm using the first person controller, and I've simply given it the tag of player. Alright, next we're going to discuss how the door is constructed. So I'm going to zoom in on the door. And the parent object is an empty game object which I've renamed door slide anim. Within that is a door. Um, it is simply a cube. I've called it door and then the door frame So the door slide anim object is going to hold the animation as well as the trigger and the script To make all of this work The door is going to be the animated portion of things and the door frame is simply going to be stationary and uh, Just be more decorative than anything All right, so moving to the one next to it, uh, it is built exactly the same way, uh, except I renamed it Work in Progress. So, starting from here, we are going to go to our animation tab. Uh, it should look like this, and it should ask you to create an animation. So we're going to say Create, and I like to put everything in its own folders, so We're going to call this door slide. And what that has done is that has created this timeline here for me that allows me to add properties uh, and then I can animate those properties. So the property that I'm going to add is the position of the door object. So add property, find the object that I want to access. I'm going to go to transform. And in this particular case, case, it is a position that we're changing. So we're going to add a key there, add a property. So now we have a keyframe at zero and one at one second. We drag our playhead out here to one second. We're going to turn on the animation. And we are going to make sure that we have the door object selected. And simply slide it out of the way. Now, once you've done that, go ahead and turn it off, and let's play the animation. So, our uh, the animation part of things is complete. Now, we need to sequence this animation. So, we're going to do that next. Okay, so by sequence the animation, what I mean is we're going to go to the animator window, and make sure that we have our door slide animation work in progress selected and we should see something like this now in the animator window this allows us to control when and in what order an animation is going to play we don't need the exit we don't need any state for right now we're going to put them off to the side first thing i want to do is i want to create an empty state so i'm going to right click create state empty and then from the entry, I'm going to right click there and I'm going to say set machine state default. And I point to the new state. 
So what that does is when the animation starts, it goes right here, which has no animation, and it is going to wait. So we created one animation of the door sliding open. Control D to copy that animation, and we're going to rename them. So we go back to door slide, and we're going to add the word open, because that's the direction that the door is moving. In this particular case, we're next we're going to go to door slide zero. We're going to change that to close. And under the speed, we set it for negative one. Doing so will cause it to play in reverse. Now, in what order do we want these to play? We're going to go from the new state, make transition, to door slide open. We go from open, make transition, to close, and then finally make transition back to new state. Now, as it is right now, this animation is going to loop through these states regardless of what we do. That's actually a good thing because we'll see our animation play. So I'm going to play my, my game now, and we can see but that door on the right just opens and closes automatically. If we watch the animator window, we can see which animation is playing at what time. I'm going to go ahead and hit escape so I can get out of this. Now there's a little bit of refinement that we need to add next. To begin refining our animation, we're going to go to our assets, and wherever you saved your animation at, we're going to go find the new one that we just created. And it will tell you one is the controller, one is the animation itself. Make sure you have the animation selected, come up to your inspector, and you'll see where it says loop time. That's something we want to turn off. We don't want it to loop. As far as other refinement goes, now we need to set up some conditions that will change depending on a script and our player entering a trigger. So these conditions will be set and we're simply going to use a trigger. This is probably the simplest way that I can think of to do this. And why don't we call this door trigger. Now if door trigger is true, then the animation will move from its current state to the next state. So what we want to do is we want to select this transition from new state to open. We're going to add door trigger. And we're going to do it from door open to door close as well. Okay, so we have created door trigger in the parameters tab, and in the transitions, we have set them both. The new state to door is set to door trigger, and open to close is. Uh, you don't need one for close to new state. Okay, so if we were to test our animation now, we would see nothing happen because we have no way of triggering uh, the door trigger at this point. So, that brings us to the coding part of things. I am going to bring up the script that controls this. Um, feel free to pause and type in line by line what I have here. Of course, we start with the usings and that's just telling us the collections and whatnot that are required. Uh, you can just create a new C-sharp script and, and type all this out. Uh, public class. I called mine door controller player tag because that's what it does. Um, I start off by creating a reference to the animator. I say animator and then underscore anim. Um, once we get to void start, 
I populate my reference. I say underscore anim, which is the name of the reference here. This dot get component animator. Since this sits on the empty game object and that's where the animation is, that's the where I want to call. Uh, void update is actually empty, so uh, we don't put anything in there. But then we have the void on trigger enter collider other. Uh, it does a quick check to make sure that the object that is it is colliding with is tagged as player. So we say if other game object dot compare tag uh, player, then anim set trigger door trigger, um, and then we have an on exit on trigger exit. Uh, same thing, simply checks to see if it is the player that did it, and if it is, it sets door trigger to true, and that causes the door to close on our way out. Now, like I said, feel free to pause this and, and write out this script. Uh, when you're done, we will return to Unity. We're going to find where you saved your script. And you are going to drag it onto your empty game object that controls everything. So, door controller player tag. And I'm just going to come up and drop it on there always like to check all right there's the moment of truth we keep our fingers crossed so we're going to run up to oh I I always forget something that's why we always cross our fingers <laughs> we still need to set up the trigger on the empty game object I should have known that that is that's sloppy so we're going to add component to the uh, door slide animation and we're just going to add a um, ch -ch -ch box collider so just type in box and then we're going to increase the size of it considerably so let's go ahead and increase the X uh, we'll say the one I have you now is like 6 uh, the Y will set to say 3 and for the Z. Now we need to change the Y position. And so now when our player runs into that green box, we need to go ahead and set this to is trigger as well. But when they run into that box collider, it will cause the animation to play. At least that is the plan. Let's try that one more time. lo and behold the door opens it'll wait until we exit the trigger to close but it will then close and um, once you get this working it is a pretty simple matter to go to your hierarchy and just drag it down into your project folder um, I keep these prefabs in a folder called my prefabs and I'm just going to go ahead and create a new folder for that real quick and we'll call it sliding door and then I will drag one from here out to sliding door and now I have a sliding door prefab that I can drop into just about any project and as long as I remember to tag whatever my player is as player then that will work so uh, and you know of course don't forget your scripts um, I hope this helps everybody um, good luck and uh, let me know how it went <laughs>